Hey guys, what's going on, and welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be talking about the 2020 presidential election as of October uh, 4th, uh, 3rd actually, um, 2020, so uh, we're going to start by filling out our safe states for Joe Biden. Oregon is a safe state, you know, there is an argument for a likely but but if you want to characterize it as likely, we're going to have to see somewhat of a swing to the right from 2016, which is unlikely to happen in the state of Oregon. Um, Hawaii will also be safe as expected. Illinois will be safe. Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, New York, Vermont, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, uh, Washington, D.C., and Maine's first congressional district. That is the urban one. Uh, the other one, the larger one, is the, is the more rural one. And then this uh, is the at-large vote, which is not going to be safe. So, now, these are all of our safe Trump states. I could see Utah and Montana both going to the likely column due to Utah. Mitt Romney uh, hasn't endorsed anyone yet, and um, uh, Evan McMullen did endorse Joe Biden, plus the fact that Utah conservatives are, are, more, are more traditional than, you know, more Trump-type conservatives. Uh, Montana, I could just see going to likely because it has been likely in the past before for Democrats. All of Nebraska, except for the second district, as expected. Kansas, I do think will end up being safe. Uh, even though there is some speculation, it could be likely Arkansas, Louisiana, Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, as uh, and Alabama. And this is a change from my last video. I do believe Mississippi will end up being safe for Donald Trump. I originally characterized this as a likely Republican state, but in 2016, if we see the percentages from the state of Mississippi, Donald Trump he ended up winning the state by uh, nearly 19 points. So I do think whoops, that, that that we're going to see a swing to the left in this state for sure, but I don't think it'll be enough to make it less than 12%. So now we're actually going to get into our more interesting states that actually are going to be competitive. Uh, so now there are some likely Democratic states, starting with New Mexico and Colorado. Some people like to hear this as safe, some as likely. But uh, by the way, betting odds, I just want to take a look at uh, first Joe Biden, 61% chance of victory. I don't know why that reloaded the page, but okay. So uh, we're going to also have to compare Joe Biden's lead in the polls to Hillary Clinton's from 2016, uh, uh at the end. But first we're going to look at, uh, uh this, uh, polls from the state of New Mexico. So I think that is listed as a battleground state, even though it's really not New Mexico. So, uh, the latest polls are the average is Biden plus 14.5 and, you know, two polls, uh, um, I don't know why, public policy polling uh, put Biden head by 14, and then the Albuquerque Journal put Biden head by 15, so he's a solid lead here according to the polling data, and, and uh, I, I should pull up the JHK forecast, that is a great forecast to take a look at, so the JHK forecast uh, gives Biden, I think, a 99% chance of winning New Mexico, a 98% chance, so New Mexico not really in play for President Trump, and he lost in 2016, in, in 2020 is, is, is expected to be a better year for Democrats than 2016, so New Mexico, it could actually be safe, but I'm counting on, you know, Joe Biden um, in a state uh, like New Mexico that is nearly 50% Latino is is pulling a little bit worse than Hillary Clinton was, so I'm counting on it still being likely, although it could very well be safe. Uh, in Colorado, you know, there is limited polling there as well, but the latest poll, I think, put Biden head by like 10 or something. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe 530 actually has more polls, but uh, RCP has a, does a better job at weighting them, but Colorado, so, uh, as of right now, Biden is ahead in Colorado by 11.4%, uh, which is just a likely margin, basically, um, for him, so, oh, I don't know why they put them up, but again, Survey Monkey generally, uh, I actually tweeted about this, Survey Monkey. again, this is just my opinion, it's a D-minus rated poll, uh, it's an online poll as well, and, you know, it's, they're just asking people online, who would you vote for? And, and this isn't a crazy result, so it's somewhat accurate, but still, 530 does a good job of ranking polls, and, th th and they don't seem to trust SurveyMonkey. So, um, you know, Global Strategy Group, uh, Morning Consult are better polls that you look at, and they have the race closer than you'd expect. Um, in fact, there actually was a poll in Colorado that put Trump ahead of Warren by 1%. So, yeah, but... Uh, the polls in Colorado have it as a likely state, and that's what I'm going to say about Colorado. It is also, Joe Biden has a 92% chance of winning there. I think it's actually better than that. So, yeah. And then, and moving on to our Rust Belt states that are going to be likely, starting with the state of Minnesota. Uh, and then we're going to go into Michigan as well. So, first, Minnesota and Michigan. 
Well, Minnesota, first of all, uh, the polls in Minnesota have not been great in the past, actually. I mean, like when you look at the polls there and compare them to what it was in 2016, uh, Minnesota, uh, right now, Joe Biden has a 9.4% lead, which does fall into the likely column. Uh, and we're going to wait up through some 538 in there as well. Uh, the state of Minnesota, the, the polls put uh, Biden head by 9, according to, uh, to F38, they put him head by 9.4, according to RCP. So I- I'm going to trust RCP there, but we also have to take a look um, at Minnesota polls 2016. Minnesota 2016 polls. Donald Trump actually, uh, the spread was actually better for Hillary Clinton uh, than the one she won it by. I mean, we saw both to put her up by 11, by 8, by 6, by 6, by 13, by 5, by 5. So, Excuse me, the polls in Minnesota actually underestimated Donald Trump, which is, um, I know that, that that does happen in the Rust Belt where the polls underestimate GOP support, but the same thing also happens in the Sun Belt, so I wouldn't wait the polls like that because you're going to get a result like Texas is, is blue, but but Wisconsin is red. So um, that's why I generally don't trust, uh, you know, those polls. Well, okay, so uh, yeah, so now we're going to go uh, and take a look at Michigan, which I do think is expected to vote, or excuse me, I expected to vote to the left of Minnesota. Um, but most people don't see it that way because you're going to say, well, UEP Michigan went, went red in 2016 in Minnesota went blue. Well, they were within 1.7% of each other. I mean, Michigan Donald Trump won by 0.2% in Minnesota. He lost by 1.5%. But Michigan is more diverse. Uh, I, I, I do think that Minnesota is turning to the right faster than Michigan is. And I think we will see higher black turnout than we did in 2016. So Michigan, the polls put uh, Joe Biden ahead by 5.2. But what do they say at this point in time about Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, 2016 Michigan polls? <clears throat> well, they were pretty close. They had Clinton ahead by three. Um, and on October uh, 3rd, uh, Clinton was ahead by 5.7. So basically mirroring Biden's lead a little bigger. But what do we see in October surprise, which brings Clinton down? And, you know, like at a certain point, she's, uh, you know, she was ahead by 3.6 on election day. I do think Biden will maintain his lead, whereas Clinton did not. This has been very stable. His worst point was back in April, where he was only ahead by 4.5%, and he's up to 5.2%. So it's maintained within one point, which is a good sign, whereas Hillary Clinton's lead was not stable at all. At one point, she led by uh, you know, four, then she was up to 7.4, then back up to 12. So we see these leads that that I generally don't like to trust because of, of you know, how, how much they vary. And in fact, at some point, she was only ahead by three. So, you know, Biden's lead has been much more stable than Hillary Clinton's has. And that's why I, I'm, I'm starting to trust the polls more than I did in 2016 or than I would have been inclined to uh, had this election been uh, similar to 2016, which is it's turning out to not be. So Virginia is our last likely state for no, I mean, at large. Uh, not really going to talk about either two states. Virginia has become a, essentially a uh, easy Democratic win. Uh, it's, you know, the, the average is Biden, Biden plus 11. I do think it'll be a little less than that, maybe 7 to 10 percent win for Joe Biden. But Donald Trump has essentially given up on the state. He's not buying ads here. And most, I, th- I think everyone seems to agree that Virginia is at this point a lock for Joe Biden. Uh, you know, the JHK forecast gives Joe Biden a 92% chance of winning there. And I and unless Donald Trump starts campaigning there, which he's not, and investing a lot of money in this state, I don't think he's going to be able to win it. Same with Maine at large. This state has, this state has not really been targeted by uh, most uh Campaigns, I guess you could say, it was targeted in the early 2000s because it was viewed as competitive, but it started to slip away from the Republican Party, and it's now become essentially a easy Democratic win. But now we're going to talk about our likely Republican states, and there are a lot of these, and I'm going to come under fire for saying, well, Alaska, I think we all agree, seems to be the likely or safe. The polling there generally tends to, uh, to underestimate Republicans. It's, it's not a battleground state, but we're going to try Alaska, Trump versus Biden. Um, and, you know, the only poll that came out was a Democratic internal poll that put Trump ahead by three. So I don't expect Alaska to be that uh, contested. And Mississippi, Indiana, South Carolina, which I know some people are going to say it's going to be lean. The Senate race could be lean. But uh, Joe Biden is expected to underperform Jamie Harrison. And lastly, the state of Texas. Uh, and, you know, I get those comments saying that Texas is going to be lean or tilt. Now, here's my reasoning. Donald Trump. Ted Cruz in 2018 
lost his or he won his Senate race by two point seven percent. That's a lean margin. Okay, I'll, okay, I'll give you that. But Beto O'Rourke he outfound race Ted Cruz. He visited every single county in this humongous state, bigger than California. Yeah, uh, you know, second biggest state by population. He he visited every single county. He had uh, he was you know he, he was younger. He had a lot more energy than Joe Biden does. He was essentially running at, in a statewide race in Texas. Joe Biden is is running in a nationwide race across all of America. He doesn't have the time uh, to spend time in every single county in Texas. And Texas is by default a red state. And sure, the Democrats are gonna are gonna flip it. You know, they're gonna have a very good chance of flipping in, in 2024, 2028. But right now, this is not uh, a Joe. I think people are overrating Joe Biden's chances here. I think it's mostly hype because a blue Texas would be pretty funny to see for a lot of liberals. Um, but you know, Texas, I don't think will actually end up, uh, going to Joe Biden. So, you know, the simulator, like you can run the simulator all you want and try to see, uh, like if you can get, uh, Biden to win Texas, which you can, like one of a, one out of every four times he actually will win it, but I'm trying to find the simulator. Um, there you go. Simulator. So you can run this, you know like a new simulation you you can just keep running until texas goes blue and it should take you like a few times but uh you know a one in four yeah here this is the first thing texas goes blue and um you know that would require a massive blue wave like that would require it's like georgia ohio ohio to, to go to biden by 11 for uh, texas to go to him by two so Again, it's it's hard for me to see him winning Texas, especially because of, you know, better work lost in 2018, and that's the Democrats' uh, peak in Texas. So all these other states, though, I, I I don't think I'll get too much opposition for in the comments. Indiana could actually end up being safe, but, you know, I just think it will narrow up and will trend to the left as opposed to 2016. Because you got to remember, Hillary Clinton, she did not really make an effort to reach out to a lot of these voters and, um, you know, she didn't really campaign in any of these states because she thought they were. She thought Indiana was safe red, and she thought Michigan was safe blue. So, those are some of her problems in the Rust Belt. Now, she she actually overperformed in Nevada, Arizona, you know these regions, but not in the Rust Belt, which ended up costing her the election. We all know that story. But Indiana, I do think Biden will actually invest a bit of money into this state. It is somewhat competitive. Obama won in two thousand and eight, and it and it has turned to the right since then, but. I do expect it to go to Trump by 11, maybe 10 points. Missouri, I do think, will go to him by 9 to 10 points. So uh, that's what you have to look at. And those just do barely fall in, into the likely column. So now we're going to go into our lean states. Nevada and Arizona are, are the first we're going to talk about. Now, Nevada, I'm going to get you know some comments saying that Nevada is, is likely for the Democrats. And I think that's a valid reasoning I'm, argument because, I mean, the polls in Nevada have actually underestimated Democrats for a long time, but let's compare them to 2016. Now, right now, the polls have a Joe Biden head by 5.3, and, and, the, uh, and Rasmussen, which is identified as a more right-leaning poll, uh, put Biden head by one. So it is looking like uh, at least Joe Biden is the favorite in Nevada. And let's compare that to 2016, where if we look at the 2016 Nevada polls, Trump versus Clinton, Trump had the lead. And, he, and and I think even at this point in time, if if you go October third, Clinton had a lead of point six, and she ended up winning it by two point four. So you know the polls underestimate Democrats in Nevada, but I'm still going to go and say Joe Biden. Well, he's not polling as well with Hillary, or as well with Latinos as Hillary Clinton was. So th that's my argument for Nevada, just barely being lean. I think it will be lean, you know, just barely uh, high on lean, you know, four point five percent margin of victory for Joe Biden. Nevada or Arizona, I do, I do think could actually vote to the left of Nevada, but um, you know, right now I, I'm more conservative with that characterization. Say that Arizona is going to just vote to the right of Nevada, which is the you know common um common knowledge, I guess. So yeah, now Joe Biden is ahead by three in the state of Arizona, according to the real politics pools, but you know his high point essentially was four points, so it, it's not really oh five actually. Uh, so it's like not really, you know, like we're not seeing insane margins of, you know, he's ahead by 10 and then he's ahead by three. So uh, his size point was was 5%. Now he, now it's 3%. So 2% essentially that we've seen it, uh, you know, go, uh, you know, switch off. But Arizona, though, Mark Kelly's running for Senate. He's expected to win his Senate seat by a likely margin. And it could end up actually being safe, which would be really, really interesting. Um, 
he's expected to help uh, ticket splitters be like, well, I'm going to vote for Kelly, but I'm but I but I'm not sure if I'm going to vote for Trump or Biden. And since Kelly's listed as the Democrat right next to Joe Biden's name, I think that will help Joe Biden because of the down ballot effect. And then also, also we got to remember that Arizona, uh, mo- Arizona is a very moderate state. They like to vote for moderates. That's why Hillary Clinton did so well there in 2016. She was expected to lose the state by 10 points. She only lost it by three and a half. So Joe Biden is a moderate. He is objectively a centrist. That'll help him there. Uh, plus, the polling in Arizona actually tends to underestimate Democrats. Uh, so Arizona, I do think, will end up staying or will end up uh, flipping blue for the first time since I think Bill Clinton. So that'll be interesting to watch. And by the way, interesting side I like to talk about. 2016, Trump won the swing county, Maricopa County, by 30,000 votes. Two years later, in 2018, Kristen Sinema, the Democrat, uh, she won that Senate race in that county by 60,000 votes. So I do think it'll be in between. I don't think Biden's going to win Maricopa by 60,000 votes. I think it'll be more like 20 to 40,000 votes. But that's my prediction for Maricopa County. And I do think that Maricopa County will vote a little bit to the right of the state of Arizona. But it's a very, very accurate indicator of where the state tends to vote. So uh, now we're going to characterize our other lean states, Wisconsin and Pennsylvania. This gets Joe Biden over the finish line. And uh, that's, you know, New Hampshire as well. And this is a flip from my previous videos. Nebraska's second district, I'm going to characterize as a lean Biden state. So starting off with the state of or the, the district of Nebraska, I guess. Um, the polling there has actually not done a polling there, but I'm going to look find Nebraska second congressional district. Trump versus Biden versus Jorgensen. The one poll that came out from the New York Times, and it, it's actually easier, believe it or not, to um, to sample or it, it's it's actually you know easy to sample congressional districts because they're smaller than states. So Joe Biden had by seven in this one poll, but I think there is a bit more data on Nebraska in, uh, so Nebraska is, trying to find the sec, second district, this is the poll that I'm talking about that had that had Biden had by seven, and then some other polls on September 18th put Joe Biden had by six, uh, Biden had by seven, and then Nebraska first district, that's not what I'm talking about, and, but all these polls, they're putting Biden ahead by pretty big margins. I'm going to characterize it as a lean Biden state. I originally characterized it as a tilt Republican state. It's going to the Biden, Biden column. That's my prediction. I think a lot of people are starting to, to uh, jump on the Nebraska 2nd District Biden hype train because it's an urban district. It's more diverse than the state of Nebraska is. And Barack Obama won it in 2016. Hillary Clinton came close to winning it. Barack Obama won it in 2008. Hillary Clinton is, did, came, did come close to, to winning it in 2016. So... I'm predicting Joe Biden will win the district. So, yeah. Now, Florida, or I don't know why I said Florida. Wisconsin, I do actually think, will vote to the left of Nebraska, second district, barely. So what do the polls say? Well, the polls are putting Biden ahead by 5.5, actually, which I think is really interesting because he's only ahead by, uh, you know, 5.3 in Michigan. So Wisconsin, the polls seem to be putting him uh Better the polls seem to be better from in, in Wisconsin than in Michigan, which I I think in Michigan will be likely, as you can see, and I think Wisconsin will be lean. But so now Wisconsin, now the polls actually were horrible; they were astronomically wrong in twenty sixteen. Um, but Clinton had by six, and she ended up losing it by one percent. So he had a seven percent swing to the right. Now they have fixed their methods. You know, in the in RCP actually weighted the polls. And they said, who's handling registered voters? How accurate have these polls been in the past? So uh, I- I'm going to trust these polls. You know, I'm going to say that it's going to be, you know, like a 3, 3 to 4% margin of victory for Joe Biden instead of 5.5% margin of victory. Also, the Democrats in the 2018 House elections in the state of Wisconsin, I mean, they did very, very well. So Wisconsin, they won the popular vote by, I think, double digits. Yeah, they, oh, no, not by double digits, but they won it by nearly eight points, and they won the Senate race there by 11, and they flipped the governor's mansion. So Wisconsin, the Democrats did very well there in the midterm elections. I think they will be able to replicate that um, in 2020. Well, not as well, but they'll be able to win the state. And in the April special election uh, where they had the Democratic primary and the king in the uh, judicial election, there was an open seat on the Wisconsin Supreme Court. The Republican Daniel Kelly was the favorite to win that race against Jill Karofsky, and he ended up get, losing by double digit. So, yeah. Now, Pennsylvania. So, how do I? 
I don't know where to begin in Pennsylvania because on one hand, Joe Biden was born in, in Scranton, Pennsylvania. He uh, likes to campaign there a lot, I mean, and as he should be, it's, it's, it's a swing state. Uh, he needs to win. Um, but at the same time, it's not as diverse as the Democrats would like it to be. So first, let's look at the polling. Now, the polling has put de- uh, the Democrats ahead usually. Biden had by 5.7, and his lead has remained fairly stable. I've been looking at, you know, since April of 2020. Um, you know, Biden was ahead by 2.3, and his high point, I think, was 8.5, and, uh, his, you know, his low point was that. So, it's kind of, it's been a little shaky, which is why I'm a little skeptical of trusting the polls here, but I'm gonna say the JHK forecast, which does a great job of weighting the polls, they were very accurate in 2018, uh, they give Biden an 80, uh, 8.7% chance of winning Pennsylvania, which I think makes him the favorite to win. And I do want to see what RC or what uh, five thirty eight is saying about these polls. Um, Pennsylvania, where's Pennsylvania? Biden, but plus five point nine, and they've had it actually more stable than RCP has. So Pennsylvania, I do think will go blue. I think it will vote to the left of Wisconsin, but to the right of Michigan and Minnesota. Now, lastly, the state of New Hampshire. So. Uh, oh, by the way, I, I forgot to mention, I, I usually like to bring this up. The Democrats um, in Pennsylvania, they won the Senate race there in 2018 by 17. They won the governor's race by over 20 points. So they did very, very well in the midterms, and they actually flipped uh, four House seats, I believe, in the state of Pennsylvania in 2018. So New Hampshire, I'm going to say, is a <clears throat> excuse me, lean Democrat state. By the way, um, I got some comments um, about me coughing. Do not worry, I'm not ill. I just have, I don't know why I'm coughing. I just have to cough sometimes. So that's just, <clears throat> well, I just did it again. So hopefully I'll be done with coughing for today. But New Hampshire, what did the polls say? Well, the polls were spot on by the, by the you know, by the percentage point in 2016. So we're going to trust the polls from New Hampshire. And they're putting Biden ahead by 8.4% on average. There are some polls that put Trump ahead, but th- this is a more Republican poll. And this is the the one interesting poll that I'm going to take seriously. Oh, no, never mind. I thought that was from NBC. But the better polls, Emerson and even Rasmussen, which does actually lean to the right, but Biden had by 14. So it's kind of a hit or miss poll. You either they're either spot on like they were in, in Michigan in 2016 or they're horribly wrong like they were in other states in 2016. So in Hampshire, I do expect to be essentially the same margin, but I'm going to give Trump the benefit of the doubt. Colleges... Uh, some of them are not uh, in person, so that'll halt some Democratic voter registration efforts because college students do tend to vote Democrat, um, as we know. So New Hampshire, I do think, will go into the lean column rather than being likely like most other people seem to think. So 290, Biden has already won the election, but we're gonna, but there are some Trump states left, starting with the state of Georgia, which is going to be our only lean Trump state. Again, Georgia is famous for its, for its voter suppression tactics, so I'm not exactly uh, sure. I, I actually think Texas will end up going... <clears throat> to the Republicans, to, to Joe, or to the Democrats, before the state of Georgia does. So that's um, you know that's all I really have to say. But Georgia, you know, the polls have actually looked decent for the for Joe Biden. Uh, Georgia, uh, you know, Biden had by point three is the average from RCP. But I don't, you know, I'm not sure that I trust because remember some of these polls are Survey Monkey. Which again is an online poll that I'm not too excited about. Uh, the average is Biden ahead by 0.5, but he's had better leads in Georgia. He had a two percent lead in July, but you know we're getting different results from Survey Monkey polls. And and again, some of these other polls, you know, this poll this poll is fine with me. So is this poll, but you know, I do think we were seeing a shift to the left because of the debate. But Biden still should not be considered the favorite in Georgia. JHK forecast, let's see what they think. They put it Biden 40, 44% chance of winning Georgia. I think that's reasonable. I think it'd be more like 40%, though. So, yeah, I think we can agree Trump is the favorite in Georgia and will remain so until the un, until the election is over. So now we're going to do our tilt states. So for the Democrats, uh, North Carolina is a tilt state, in my opinion, <clears throat> uh, and as is Florida. This is Florida. I've gone. It went from tilt Republican to tilt Democrat to tilt Republican, now back to tilt Democrat. So, Florida, I, I don't even I don't even know what to say about this state. The polls have been so weird in this state. You know, F- Florida really needs to – those polls. Um, in, in some elections, they underestimate Democrats. Others, they underestimate Republicans. 
They averaged Biden ahead by 1.1. They were pretty accurate in 2016. They put Biden or Trump ahead by one. He ended up winning it by like 1.5. So I'm going to go ahead and trust the polls here and say that Florida, you know, Biden's had bigger leads. Like, of course, he, he had an 8% lead in July, but that was bound to change. The Democrats generally have bigger leads in the summer than they do, you know, in the fall. But the fact that Biden has been able to maintain this lead, which is important to look at, shows that if he can maintain this till election day, he should be considered the favorite to win in Florida. He's also started to, to, to pick up some ground with the Latino vote in this state. And uh, don't forget that Ron DeSantis could be hurting President Trump and uh, that Florida, you know, is, is, you know, a good bellwether state. And Joe Biden is expected to win the election. So Florida, I do think, will vote uh, a couple of points to the right of the country, but will end up going to the winner of the election. So Florida, now to North Carolina. Most people don't seem to think North Carolina should be considered a blue state. Now, this is my argument. In 2016, there was evidence of voter suppression, you know, rejecting provisional ballots for minorities, uh, not counting some votes, in, in intimidating voters at the polls. But that was all with the Republican governor and a Republican secretary of state. Now it could be reversed. The Democrats could be counting of, counting votes in discarding absentee ballots and provisional ballots in a way that's favorable to them, whereas the Republicans had the, had the advantage there in 2016. So North Carolina, I do think, with Roy Cooper as governor, who's also running for re-election, is expected to win by double digits. That'll help Biden down ballot. And, you know, the polling has been really, really weird here. Uh, but I'm going to trust it and say it was a little bit, um, you know, it was a little bit uh, too confident in Clinton in 2016. But, you know, Biden had his biggest lead here. It, it was only 4% in, in August. And, he, and he's maintained the lead, you know, he actually fell behind towards the end of August. But still, I'm not exactly sure that I'm that I'm able to trust um these polls that are putting Trump ahead by 10 in North Carolina, and it's bringing the whole thing down. So North Carolina, I do think we'll end up going to Joe Biden, but I could see going to Trump. So this is our final electoral map, 334. This is Joe Biden's highest point, in my opinion. You know, back in June or July, I, ha I had this map, except Nebraska's second district going red. Now I think it will be blue. So Iowa, Ohio, uh, Maine's second district, you know, uh, the polls in Iowa have been... Uh, pretty bad for the for, for the Republicans. They, you know, in 2016, they put Clinton ahead by, or they put Trump only ahead by three, and he ended up winning it by nine. So I don't like to trust the polls from here. They're putting Biden ahead by 0.5. It's better than Clinton's lead, so, which is why I think it'll be closer. But at the same time, he should not be considered the favorite. Now, that I understand the Democrats did win the uh, statewide vote in the House election there in 2000 and, uh, 2006 to 2018. But I don't think that that they'll be able to replicate that at the presidential level because, again, these House candidates, they have the time to campaign in, in every single small town. Joe Biden doesn't have the time to do that, and he doesn't need to win Iowa. You know, <clears throat> these uh, people running for Congress, of course they want to win their district. That's why they're running. But Joe Biden doesn't need Iowa. You know, he, he needs other states like Florida. He needs North Carolina, or he doesn't need those states, but he wants to win. North Carolina and Florida are easier for him to win, and they have more electoral votes than Iowa does. So. Now, Ohio, the polls have actually been very, very good for Joe Biden here. And I haven't seen a single poll come out that's put Donald Trump ahead. Actually, I have now. CBS News slash YouGov, uh, they polled the state of Ohio. They polled uh, 1,200 likely voters. So, um, you know, that's uh, something to take a look at. NBC News sampling registered voters or actually Emerson, similarly registered voters from Trump ahead by three. But all these other polls are seeing Biden ahead by eight in Quinnipiac, Biden ahead by four, by four, by five, the most recent one from Fox News. And that that nets out to an average of Biden ahead by 3.3. .3. I don't think that he'll win the state. I think he will end up losing it by, you know, uh, less than 1% because Ohio is, is, is still going to be very, very close. People have started to write it off. Yet a lot of these polls that are coming out seem to be putting, uh, you know, Biden ahead. And again, I'm skeptical of some of these polls because Ohio does tend to underestimate Republican support in the polls. But at the same time, it is important that, that we uh, look at them. So yeah, JHK forecast, they agree with me. They think Biden has a good chance of winning here, just not the favorite. And lastly, Maine's second congressional district. So the second congressional district, um, you know, it's hard for me to analyze because the polls do put, um, do put uh, the Democrats 
up, I guess you could say, <clears throat> in the second district. Uh, is, is, is it mean second? Okay, we're gonna have to look on up through the, um, main, uh, the, there were some polls that came out that put the Democrats ahead, but I'm not going to trust those because there because there was only one poll that sampled the second congressional district, but um, but the, Trump still won it by ten percent. So Colby College sampled it, Biden had by three, uh, and then Biden had by one, by one, um, by by two. So the poll he he, he said this essentially a bit better of a lead than Hillary Clinton did, but only by like one percent. So. I think it will trend to the left. I mean, Trump won it by a likely margin in 2016. I think he'll win it by a tilt margin this time around. So, again, guys, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Check out all the links in the description, and I'll see you all in the next one. By the way, follow my Twitter and um, ask questions for the Q&A.